94.9 The Rock, GTA's rock station, Bob Willette on the phone with Rain Maida, of course, the lead singer of Our Lady Peace, but also a huge part of this, uh, I'm, I don't know if you can call it a new duo, but of, of this project, Moon versus Sun. Uh, Rain, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to the uh, rock listeners today. Yeah, my pleasure, man. It's good to talk to you. So, Moon versus Sun. I'll talk. I'm going to talk a little early to piece in a little bit, of course, because we can't not. But Moon versus Sun is uh, is is this project that you have started with your wife and to people who don't know who your wife, Chantel Kraviazic. How did the? I, I mean, I guess in, when you get together as a cup as as a couple and you're both so you know your life is music. It, was this just inevitable? It. I felt like I, you know I felt like it was, but it was it was taking a long time to happen. We had many conversations about it, tried to get into a studio to write and record. And, you know, life is busy, man. It's like with OLP, with three kids, with all this other stuff going on. It's like every time we tried to do that, it just wouldn't happen. Uh, so a friend of ours in LA, who's a film person, she was like, hey, because we performed together a bunch for like charity things. And um, she's seen us and she was like, you guys, it, it, what you have is amazing. You should film this. And what that will do, it's like, let's book a crew. Let's book a place to go so you're away from your kids. You're away from, you know, your house and your home studio. And let's and that will, like, you will have to go. It'll, make, it'll give you guys, like, you have all these responsibilities with hired people and cameras, and it'll make you go and do it. And she was right. We went to this little French island called St. Pierre Miquelon and pulled up in literally, like, in a hotel and wrote the record. And we filmed it all. And um, it's funny because it was, you know, it was really about the music, but this documentary made, it, it kind of gets into like the nitty gritty of being, you know, partners for whatever, 17 years and, and having kids and being away from home and all that stuff kind of worked its way into this documentary and kind of the music as well. But, um, you know, it's, it's pretty raw. And I think the music is as well, which is kind of cool, which is the, really the only way I wanted to write songs with Chantel is like, really had to be about the lyrics and if we had something to say. Well, yeah, I, I would imagine, though, ha like having those cameras there, like ha did that change the process for you? I mean, obviously, you know, when you're writing for OLP, uh, you, you, there's no there's no pressure. I mean, there's pressure to write because you want to put out good music, but there's not like we've got a crew of people we're paying to be here, you know? Yeah, this is crazy because, it's, I, I mean, I you know, I've, I've seen hundreds of music documentaries. I've never seen one like this because you're actually in the room with us when like a song idea happens and watching two artists go through that sometimes fight about it sometimes <laughs> walk out of the room from each other about it but it's like it's the purity and the essence of of music i it's never i i i'm, I'm like, i get chills watching it myself like I, i'm like i don't know if we should be showing this you know most in a documentary for music, people usually show the good parts, right? Of course, we show just we just we show just as many bad parts in this, which is a little scary. And well, it's called "I'm Gonna Break Your Heart," so which would make me think, yeah, it's probably it's a I, I, it's an emotional piece, right? So you're gonna take that that when uh, when can people? I know uh, like the official screenings uh, are coming up, and then this tour of Ontario is coming up as well. Now, will you incorporate any clips from the movie into your show? Like the live yeah, show? Yeah, we're trying to just, yeah, we're trying to, I'm doing some editing right now and trying to figure that out. We're still just finishing like the final touches on the film and hopefully uh, the premieres will be sometime in, in November. But I'd love to give people like a sneak peek during this show, uh, you know, at, at, in the Markham Theater and the Ontario shows, just kind of give them a sense of like what this documentary looks like. It acts more like a film, like it's shot beautifully. And like I said, the, I think the music is great. The songs, the songs turned out beyond my expectations with working with Chantel, you never know. Like we wrote this one amazing song about three years ago, call him, uh, I love it when you make me beg. And that really spawned like what the sound was going to be like. And it's, it's pretty, it's yeah, it's, it's pretty different for, uh, for both of us, which I think is interesting. Well, I thought that was my next question. Cause I've seen that. I've, there's a, there's a, there's a bunch of live videos of you guys doing that, working that song out, not working it out, but playing yeah. it in front of crowds out there on YouTube. Yeah. And it, it is different. And so, and let's, you know, your, uh, I mean, she's primarily a piano player. You're pri primarily, uh, a guitar player. Um, yeah. so did that, did you find that dynamic, uh, helped in the process or did it, did it, did it just, was it, did it make it more challenging? No, I think it, I think it simplified it. We really have like our roles and, and what instruments hold what down and, and how we're able to do this. And what I think is really cool and what you see in the documentary, because 
there are no other players with us in the dock, you know, when we're sitting in a hotel room writing these songs. It's like that's the kind of puzzle. It's like you have to you have to make the arrangements work where it's just those two instruments and our two voices. But I mean, what I found it's like this, it's kind of it's not limitless, but it's pretty expansive in terms of like the range of sounds we got and, and arrangements. You know, I love when you make me beg. It's a hugely bombastic song, and then we have songs like. There's this one song called I Can Change, which in the documentary, you literally see it like being born wow. from like, here are the chords we just wrote. Okay, now let's try some lyrics and melodies. And then we, we record it in that hotel room. I brought a little Pro Tools rig and you see it being recorded. You see the whole process. And I, I, it's one of the best songs I've ever been a part of writing, like by far. I love how excited you sound about this. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty, great. It's no, it's great. Different. There's great energy coming yeah. from you about this. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. Now, when you're writing on your own and I it's not fair to, to but when you're writing, are you lyrics first? Do you get a chord, a riff? Like, how does that know when you're when you're writing on your own? I, you know what? It started in my early songwriting days. I, I look back to like 4 a.m. or Superman's Dead. It was really more about sitting with a guitar and just waiting something out like strumming and humming melodies and maybe some random kind of like, you know, serendipitous lyrics with the chord or, or the feeling you got or a color. And it was like this process that really happened over, it took time, right, to have this, yeah. have this thing just kind of almost channel through me. And that's the way I looked at songwriting. And that's how I, I thought the purity of that was really amazing in terms of you're trying to just wait for that moment. But now I think, especially with OLP, it, it really, I need to have a lyric because what I've learned over the years, it's like, um, I have to go sing this stuff, you know, in front of lots of people every night and I need to believe it. And, and, uh, I want to make sure that the, the songs that we continue to write, the lyric is just, it's going to stick with me this, because there's some, there's definitely all piece songs that we don't play and it's probably my fault, but I just don't connect with them anymore. Oh, well, that's interesting. Level, so I can't, I, I don't believe it, you know, so it's like it doesn't work. Obviously, 4 a.m. does. And those have been the examples for me. So I have I have journals that I just continue to write. And, and that's where I'll start from now. I, I more more often, you know, Steve and, and Duncan and Jason, sometimes they'll just record this incredible track. And I'm like, yeah, we're using that and I'll find something to write. But more often than not, I want it to start with the lyrics. And, uh, well, I mean, th th those bars are pretty high right there with 4 a.m. Like, I mean, just that's one of my all time favorite songs. And I think a lot of people will say that. But I think it's interesting how you say the uh, how the how the music, uh, if it doesn't if it doesn't, you know, if you're not reacting to it, uh, then you're not you feel like you're almost being fake up there. Right. Like it's if it's if you're not feeling it, then you don't want to perform it. I, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody say that before. I think that I think that's terrific. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's why I got in, I got into music because I'd sit at home, you know, depressed as a as a teenager, listening to, you know, from Springsteen to the Stones to to REM and U2 and um, my God, a lot of you know, obviously early Nirvana and stuff, and and it just was like, if those songs that made the the hair on on your on the back of your neck stand up, yeah. like that's what we go for with OLP, and and even more so now than than uh, we used to. It's really about trying to channel that emotion. And, and I can say, you know, even on this last record with something, it's like if we're not all in it and feeling it, it's not going to happen anymore. We don't, we don't force that stuff where we used to probably in, you know, moments. Well, there's a pressure to be something, you know, uh, the, the, the industry can be its own pressure, right? But uh, back to Moon versus Sun, because that's why we're here. You're playing October 24th at the Markham Flatto Theater. You're doing a bunch of dates all around. Nice soft seat arenas. That's a big difference from opening for Guns N' Roses. <laughs> a little, yeah, a little. Um, I, yeah, you know what? I love I, this, this. What I love about the Moon versus Sun show, it's so dynamic. Like we have... Actually, Jason from OLP plays drums with us. He's he he plays a totally different style. It's more like a cocktail kit, but he is just such a badass drummer that it's incredible. And then we bring a friend of ours who plays cello, and the show has these really incredible. Like we can really do whatever we want. We're not stuck in any set or format, and it really kind of like goes with the energy of the crowd sometimes. And and I love that ability to be that. It's more like jazz in that sense, you know. And then. Um, we're, we're really planning on doing some interesting things with the lights and like, and like you mentioned before, like some of the video stuff. So we've done some Mover, show, Mover Sun shows before, but this is going to be something like 
if you've seen a show from us before, it's going to be very, very different. And I got to ask, because I'm, I'm a huge, well, I'm a huge OLP fan, like most people are. Uh, I love your wife's first album, Under These Rocks and Stones, is just uh, like an unbelievable masterpiece. I just, I remember when that came out. Oh, wow. I love it. Like just from beginning to end, man, I, that's one of my, like you, you, you and your wife have two of my personal top 10 favorite albums of all time. I don't know. Maybe it was the year that's 97. Cool. Yeah. I just love it. So will you guys do a couple songs that people will know, like some OLP oh, or, sure, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, we do a bunch. Of, I mean, different arrangements and stuff. I mean, sure. Speaking of Chantel, like she does a version of Superman's Dead that I think everyone that leaves after hearing that is like, that's actually better than OLP. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It scares me how good it is. Oh, that's so cool. I think that song. Yeah, it's very cool. Well, that's great. Well, I, I I encourage people to go check you check you guys out. Uh, Moon versus Sun. Uh, I got well quickly. I just got to ask. I meant this is on my list here. I should. Where uh, where'd the name come from? It just comes from that dynamic, you know, when you have two strong-willed people, kind of stubborn like we are, it's, <laughs> it's a constant, it's a constant battle, but in a good way, you know, and I think, I think we've come to a place, I think in the documentary, you get to see, like, the work we do to make that, to make it work, you know, it's like you're, you know, you, if, if you've been in a relationship for any amount of time, yeah. it's like you've, you got to put in the same amount of work you do to whatever craft you have in your life, you know, and, and we've tried to do that, so... So far, so good. I always say my uh, my secret to longevity uh, in a relationship is asking yourself in your head, "Is it worth it? Is this worth? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is it worth going to pick this battle? Yeah, is this worth it? Because if it's not, I'm going to save it because I think I can come up with something else. I can. Uh, I imagine your kids are just as uh, as willful as well. I can only imagine what Sunday dinners are like. <laughs> Yeah, they are. They're tough little kids, but you know, it's all it's all good. That's, I, that's life. It's like you want to embrace the struggle, and you just want to be able to come out, you know, kind of smiling at the end of it. And that's, absolutely, that's kind of. I think when I, when I look at myself when I was writing songs earlier, it was that angst and that kind of um, that passion. And not that it was misspent, but it's like you, you can still have that, but find. Um, gratitude if that makes sense absolutely well yeah i mean and you guys have been such a big part of helping uh well just the world and you know you've been recognized by uh with the order of canada and rightfully so you're you're uh, we don't even have time to get into all your charitable work and and what you do there so taking all that energy and putting it towards that you know you just uh we're very thankful to have uh to have you uh and uh, and your wife and really looking forward to uh seeing moon versus sun uh, rain i can't thank you enough for taking the time today Oh, man, my pleasure. It was great talking to you about it.